Eh, psst. Come here, you. Yeah, you. How'd you like to buy a share in a gold mine, eh? Gee, this may be a big chance. So, listen. <laughs> Theater 5 presents Found Money. Naughty, naughty. Nautical but nice, huh? Oh, you mustn't say such <laughs> wicked things. I'll say it again, Miss Lewis. In a topless bathing oh. suit, you would stand oh, out. please, <laughs> Mr. Corbett, change the subject. All right, what should we change it to? Well, um, your work as a geologist, Mr. Corbett, do you find it interesting? Of course. Oh, I don't believe you. Except two nights ago. Two nights ago? Discovered a gold nugget as big as a plum. Why, but two nights ago, we were already at sea. Correct. You, uh, mister, you, you discovered a gold nugget on board our ship? Yeah, oh. when a young fella showed it to me. Oh, you. A, a real gold nugget? He found it. Oh, my. Where? In a mountain stream in Burma. Why, he'll, he'll be a millionaire. Imagine, a whole gold mine. Somebody has to be lucky. Oh, Mr. Corbett, why not you? Why not me what? Well, why not buy a share in his mind? Me invest? Me? Well, why not? Don't you want to get rich? <laughs> oh, Miss Lewis, I couldn't even afford a, a beetle haircut. <laughs> Don't they pay geologists enough? Not thirsty geologists. Well, but what about this trip to Australia? On the cuff, courtesy Sydney University, which badly needs geologists on its faculty. Oh, I see. Why not you? Me? You mean invest? Well, I, I don't have the money. Well, cable your bank back home for two or three thousand. What I? <laughs> it's nothing to me. I pass up a hundred thousand if you want to. Hundred thousand dollars. Oh my. Oh, Mister Corbett. Oh. I only wish I could invest. That's a chance of a lifetime. Yes, I know. But when I got home, I wouldn't have a cent left. Oh, come on now. No, no. Miss May Lewis, the designer of children's clothes, broke. Oh, <laughs> heavens, you took me for May Ann Lewis. You're not? Oh, I only wish I were. No, no, I'm just plain May Lewis, a school mom from Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls. Yes, I'm on sabbatical. It took me ten years to save for this trip, Mr. Corbett. So you see, I... Yes, I see, all right. Oh, imagine. A gold mine. Oh, well, maybe opportunity will knock again sometime, Miss Lewis. Well, I'll see you around. Oh, Mr. Corbett. Mr. Corbett. Oh, dear. <laughs> Beg your pardon, sir. Might I trouble you for a light? No, sure. Thank you, sir. Mm. Ah, by the way, I, I couldn't help over hearing part of your conversation with the lady in the dining room. No. And my name is Fingers, sir. I'm from Baton Rouge. Bill Corbett, Milwaukee. Delighted to meet you, sir. Delighted. I, uh, it just happened that I'm, uh, Extremely interested in uh, precious metals. Oh. Oh, I see. Now, that fellow Baker's nugget, uh, are you absolutely certain that that is genuine? I've been a geologist for 11 years, Mr. Finger. I guess I should know. Ah. And uh, what would you say it was worth, sir? Seven or eight thousand. Rough guess, of course. I see. I see. And you think it definitely indicates a very rich claim. There's no doubt about it. Uh, young Baker realizes, of course. I told him when he showed me the nugget. Well, didn't he already know? He guessed. 
But he hadn't shown it to anyone except a few people he trusted back home to uh, raise money. Well, now, why did he risk showing it to you? He got worried by a book he'd read in the ship's library. Oh, worried about what? That maybe he'd only found fool's gold, iron pyrite. He'd heard that I was a geologist, so he asked me to assess it. Oh. Now, Mr. Carver, suppose, sir, you, uh, you were to discover that you were mistaken. What do you mean, mistaken? Well, I suppose you hunted up Baker and, and apologized. Apologized? For what? Well, for having had a drop too much when you analyzed that specimen for him. Well, what if I did? Well, you explain that you're worried that you may have misled him, and so you ask him to let you examine the nugget again. And, what are you driving at? And then you make the sad discovery that you have made a mistake. It's just plain iron pirate. Five hundred dollars. Oh, well, that's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for a man who can't even afford a, a beetle haircut. <laughs> <laughs> You've got uh, good ears, Mr. Finger. Oh, I always listen for opportunity knocking, sir. Of course, I don't know why you're doing this, do I? <laughs> it's none of my business, is it? Yeah, that's right, sir. <laughs> none of your business. <laughs> In cash, the whole 500 now? All right, after I talk to Miss Bacon, I'm convinced that you've kept your part of the bargain. Yeah, I suppose he won't believe it's just fool's gold. I think he'll believe it. I'm sure you can be mighty convincing for uh, $500. That would certainly buy a lot of thirst quenchers, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> In Australia, there's a mighty thirsty place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me get this straight, Mr. Finger. You mean you want to buy 60% interest for $1,000? Yes, that's right, my boy. But I already told you it's not a real gold mine. Mr. Corbett said he'd make a mistake. It's just iron pyrite. Yes, I know, and I admire your honesty, young man. Well, then why do but you... But I'm a gambler, son. Nothing I like better than a good long shot. I'm a very lucky man. <laughs> you still think there's a chance it might be real gold? A chance in a million, maybe? And you're willing to bet a thousand dollars on it? <laughs> when I win, son, I like to win big. So if it'll ease your mind, we'll spell that right out in the contract that I'm buying sixty percent of whatever is in that load of yours. Iron pyrite, gold, or pits of pie. <laughs> <laughs> now how's that, son? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> So now I own a gold mine. I'd carved my way into Millionaire's Row for a paltry grand and a half on the pot. Yeah, this is the last trip I'd ever have to make with a marked deck. Laying out the 1500 though, it left me a little short in the pocket, so uh, I decided to go ahead with one last mark. I'd set him up the night before, baiting the hook by dropping 20 bucks in a, a friendly game. <laughs> He just couldn't wait to bite into some more of that easy money. <laughs> so I dusted off my cards, and I headed for the last round of... Baker? It's all right, Corbett. No one in the cabin but me. Beautiful job, kid. Especially for an amateur. Oh, gee, thanks, Corbett. Real live one, that finger, huh? Oh, sharp, sharp. <laughs> Did he ask to see the gold-plated gizmo? Oh, sure. Figured. Okay, let's have my half. Sure. Uh, right after you split what finger gave you to tell me the mine was worthless. Oh, right, yes. He did slip me a bribe. Almost forgot. Here's your half. Fifty bucks? Mm hmm Now, my half of the big touch. Oh, sure. Uh, fifty? A hundred? Two hundred, two fifty. There you are. Two fifty? <laughs> I didn't come down in the last shower, kid. What do you mean? Finger paid you a lot more than five hundred. You call me a liar? And a bad one. Oh, now, see here, Corbett. Now, I agreed we'll, to work con with you, yes, but I still have my principles. Oh, man, come alive. Oh, so you're not going to trust me? You funny me, boy, you know. 
Well, then, why did you ask me to be your partner? I thought I could teach you con, kid. <laughs> Instead, you're teaching me. Uh, uh, Corbett, where, where are you going? I don't really mind your lying to me, boy, but when you take me for fool enough to believe it... Oh, uh, now, wait a minute, Corbett, please. I... You're on your own, kid. No hard feelings, all the luck in the world. Without me, sonny boy, you're going to need it. Oh, Corbett, I... Corbett! All right, then. Beat it. I don't need you. And you'll be sorry you walked out on me. I am going to make the biggest score you ever saw. And all by myself. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. along the sun deck, worrying about Corbett's breaking up our partnership, and wondering how smart I'd been trying to give him the short end of the deal. It uh, wasn't just the extra 250 I wanted. I, I, I just couldn't resist seeing if I was smart enough to con an old con man. Well, I'd got away with it, but uh, I'd outsmarted myself. Now, how could I work con alone? And what kind of con? The gold nugget bit we'd worked on Finger was all Corbett's ideas. Now, what could I do for an encore and without Corbett? Suddenly... Uh, oh! Hey! Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I beg your pardon. Yeah, what for? Oh, well, for falling on you like this. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> Isn't every day a beautiful girl falls right in a fellow's arms? <laughs> there. there you are. Thank you, you. Okay? Yes, thanks. Yeah. What's your name? Faith Richardson. Miss Faith Richardson? Mm-hmm. Oh, good. I'm uh, Pete Baker. Oh, how do you do? Oh, uh, please, sit down. Oh, thank you. I've been saving this deck chair just for you. You didn't even know me. I wanted to, from the first day out. You never even spoke to me. Well, how could I? You're always with your father. You really did notice me, didn't you? I'm flattered, Mr. Baker. Oh, call me Pete, please. You're going a bit fast for a missionary's daughter. Missionary? You? <laughs> Why so surprised? Well, uh, your hair, for instance. Oh, what's wrong with it? Oh, it's uh, wonderful. Like an orange sunset. <laughs> missionary's daughters aren't supposed to have hair like orange sunsets. Hmm? No, <laughs> nor long eyelashes. And eyes the color of the sea along a coral reef at sunset. Well, that's... Very beautiful, Mr. Baker. So are you, Miss Richardson. And why else don't I seem to you a suitable daughter for a missionary? Well, uh, your father wears a business suit. Well, he's not affiliated with any church. A missionary without a church? Mm -hmm, at the moment. Well, he did belong to one, but he left it. Why? Well, he... Oh, there's father now. Oh, Father. Oh, there you are, Faith. I, uh, I was looking for you. Father, I want you to meet Mr. Peter Baker. Uh, pleasure, Reverend. Well, how are you, young man? Oh, uh, please, uh, join us, sir. No, thank you. No, 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 don't, don't get up. I'll just sit here on the arm of Faith's chair. Uh, where is your mission, Reverend? Well, it was in Dutch West New Guinea. Was? Well, what happened to it? Burned to the ground. During the invasion of North Guinea by Sukarno's troops. Twenty years of work wiped out in one day. A school, church, native clinic. Oh, gee, that's terrible. But you know, there was nothing but jungle when Father first went there. The natives were headhunters and cannibals, but Father won them over. Oh, he worked hard, very hard, to build the mission. Did you really convert them, Reverend? Father civilized whole tribe. Now, now, I simply helped some of my brothers, unfortunate enough to be born in savagery. There ought to be more men with your kind of dedication, sir. But uh, what happened after your mission burned? Well, the natives lost their faith in the power of heaven to protect them. They became pagans again. Oh, gosh, that must have been tough for you. Father managed to escape. More dead than alive. How did he get out of New Guinea? Well, an Australian oil expedition spotted him and flew him south to Townsville. Well, Faith, uh, where were you all this time? College. Oh, on a scholarship. And your mother? 
Well, Mother died three years ago. I'd wanted to drop out and join Father in New Guinea then, but I he... still say the jungle is no place for a young girl, Faith. Oh, now, Father, you know you need me as a nurse. You're still in poor health, sir? No, oh, that's poppycock. Oh, really? Is that why the church board wouldn't hear of your going back? Ah, the church board. Pack of fools. And the jungle at your age, Father? Rubbish. Rubbish. Moses was almost 90 when he led the Israelites out of Egypt. And I, too, must go where Providence calls me. Mm -hmm. You see, Mr. Baker, my father is a very stubborn man. I can't help admiring him. I do, too. That's why I dropped out of college to go back with him. Against my wishes. Well, I'm as stubborn as you are, Father. Oh, then the church board finally came around, huh? No, unfortunately. They washed their hands of the mission because the natives had turned on Father. But you're going to New Guinea anyhow. Entirely on our own, Mr. Baker. Whew. The mission must be rebuilt, all of it. Well, suppose the Carnot's troops won't let you do it, then. They'll have to kill me to stop me. So will the witch doctors. Oh, Reverend, you've got what it takes. It's simply a matter of conscience, Mr. Baker. But, uh, Faith, aren't you scared? Yes. But I'm more worried about how we'll manage. What do you mean? Well, passage took every cent we had. Now, Faith, heaven will provide. I hope so, Father. We need so many things. Provisions, building materials, furniture, clothing, medicine, Bible. How long do you plan to stay? As long as Father needs me. But you might be... You're so young. Well, I couldn't let Father go back into the jungle alone at his age. Mr. Baker, I've lived selfishly long enough. Now it's time for me to make some of the sacrifices Father's been making all his life. I couldn't live with my conscience if I didn't. Oh, but be realistic. You have no funds. Something will turn up. Oh, well, now look... Well, now look here. I I'd like to... Well... Here. Take this. Oh. Oh, oh. Oh, Mr. Baker, no, I, I couldn't. Now, don't argue. I want you to oh, have but, it. but this is so much money. It's only 800. Well, only? Why, Mr. Baker, it, it's a fortune to us. Now, don't think anything of it, please. Oh, it's but... a small found money. I'd only throw it away foolishly. Faith, Providence has sent this young man to us. We shall name the new mission after him. Oh, gosh, Reverend. It is the least we can do to repay your charity, young man. I shall never forget your magnificent gesture. Nor I, Peter. Father and I have taken you to our hearts. <laughs> faith, faith, you were terrific. Oh, it was a proud Europe performance, wasn't it, Pa? <laughs> Eight hundred bucks for an hour's work. Yes. Magnificent. Oh. Soda, all on the rocks, honey. Oh, soda, please. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Pop. Well, Heim. A yes, score. Ah. Well, that makes two scores and a total of 1,205 days at sea. Not bad. No, wait till after tonight, <laughs> baby. Tonight? Uh, another fish coming up. My own special. Oh, Pop, no. Honey, this fish is just begging for the hook. But you're supposed to be a missionary. It won't look right. Nobody's going to see us. We're playing in his stateroom. Oh, why can't you stick to one racket at a time? Now, stop worrying, honey. I don't even have to deal from the bottom with oh, this fish. Pop, you... <laughs> I played gin with him yesterday and took him for 20 bucks. Pop, be careful, huh? It's found money, baby. <laughs> Never saw an easier mark. And this man, Finger, owns 60% of a gold mine. Theater 5 has presented Found Money, written by Jules Archer and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast... Cliff Carpenter, Evelyn Guster, Ian Martin, Stan Watt, and James Monks. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser.
Two interesting dramas with unusual endings are featured next Sunday afternoon at 5.05 on Theater 5. The first play is subject number 428A, an experiment at a university gets out of hand. The second drama is The Sacrifice. A business executive is faced with the choice of sacrificing his own career or that of his son. That's next Sunday afternoon at 5.05 on Theater 5 over WLSFM. We hope you've enjoyed our two dramas this afternoon. We welcome your comments. Write to Theater 5, WLSFM, 360 North Michigan Avenue, Chicago 60601. We invite you to listen again next week at 5.05.